Hello and welcome to Doing Business with Love. We're continuing on the Love Fest today. Uh, I am your hostess with the Moses, Mila Horenda, and today I am featuring uh, Sarah Schneider, a life coach and holistic nutritionist. I can't wait to dive into this because nutrition is one of my favorite topics. So welcome, 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 and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, as I said, I am so into nutrition. I've been like into it for like my whole life. So I'm really, really excited to speak to you. Um, first, though, let's start off with the question that I, I start with everybody is uh, how do you infuse love into your business? Yeah. So when you <laughs> told me about this, I was like, huh. Um, I think one of the things that we get away from, especially in the nutrition world, is this idea that it's all about science and food is all about fuel and we have to um, do all the right things and put all the puzzle pieces together. And to some extent, I totally believe that. Um, but I think that it's more than that. And so I really come from the nutrition space um, from a different direction and I really believe in um, unconditional love and compassion and grace for ourselves and so I, I don't know if it um, kind of bleeds through into my business I'm sure it does of it's, course it does model. <laughs> um, yeah but yeah it's it's this idea that we have to give ourselves a lot of grace and a lot of compassion um, and learn because unconditional love is something that a lot of us didn't um, experience a tremendous amount of but learning to unconditionally love ourselves um, and when you're able to do that then you're able to love others unconditionally um, and that that kind of goes into the whole sharing your gifts and your talents with the world yes it sure does <clears throat> and I really I really 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 believe that uh, how we fuel our body really uh, extends to the rest of our lives. Yeah. It's our foundation. So I have this thing called my life mission book and I have all these different levels <clears throat> and my uh, foundation is health and then fitness is second. And I classify them as different because you can right. be, you can be totally healthy eating like, mm -hmm. you know, only organic and whatever, and you cannot run a mile and then right. <laughs> Yeah. Or you can be like a superstar athlete getting paid the big bucks and like some basketball team and boozing it up every night. And that's not healthy, right? So right. one way or yeah. another, we've got to find a balance in there. <clears throat> so how and why did you start your business, your life coaching and holistic nutrition business? Yeah, I have kind of an interesting story. So I actually started out in corporate. Um, I started working for a nutritional ingredient company. Um, and I did a lot of product formulation and research and development. Um, I'm very sciencey, like super sciencey. Um, I read scientific literature for a living. Like <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I would do is I would take all these really top level, like very, I mean, very, very high level stuff. And I would trickle it down and, and, um, explain it in a way that really made sense to people. And, um, then about about a year ago, a year and a half ago, my grandfather got very sick. Um, he and I were super, super close. And uh, he had gone into hospice. And I thought, you know what? This is it, now or never. He was an entrepreneur his whole life. He failed at businesses. He succeeded at businesses. And I, I could not live like one more second in corporate. I just couldn't do it anymore. And so I think a lot of people can resonate with that yeah. because they go to their jobs and it feels like going to jail. Yes. Yes. Like shackled. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And I was in a very male dominated industry. I was the, one of the only female, um, around this big boardroom table in meetings. And I was the youngest by like 15 years. Wow. So, so yeah, it, it it was a battle every day and I just, I was done. So, um, the, the week that my grandfather died, it was the week that I bought my, my URL and I was like, I'm going to do this thing. So, um, a few months later I left, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> 
I had no idea how this was going to turn out. Um, <laughs> but I just had to lean into the faith because I, this is what I was put on this earth to do. This was my divine purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really helping moms. Like that's kind of my shtick is like really helping moms mm -hmm. learn how to nourish themselves in all types of ways. So body, mind, and heart. Um, and it, I work with moms a lot because they're raising our next generation of healthy eaters. Yes, yes, yes. I myself am not a mom, but there's going yeah. to be a lot of mom and dad viewers. Um, and it is important to be that leader in your family. Mm -hmm. And I notice this in my family uh, with my father since I've changed my nutrition over the years. Like he's actually getting more and more um, curious about what I'm doing because I've just released like 60 pounds, right? right. So he's all like, well, what are you doing? Not that he's overweight. He's not overweight or anything. He's like perfectly good for a man in his 60s. Like he's doing really well. But uh, he has problems with his knees and stuff. And I have arthritis in my knees. And just by eating different foods, I am now training for like a half marathon. I had an injury. I healed myself from within with nutrition and mindset That's and amazing. all those things, right? It's the yeah. combination, right? Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit more about this combination of, you know, I know you do life coaching as well and uh we had a brief chat and i know you do more on the mindset and kind of mind shifting mm -hmm. before as well as the nutrition because i really believe that's a key factor yeah so my philosophy i have what i call a nourishment blueprint um and it's kind of like a triangular approach you have physical um, aspect you have the psychological aspect which would be mindset um, and then you have logistical because uh, you know what one needs like a mom of four under the age of eight is their logistical needs are gonna be completely different than like um, a woman who is single on her own and running a business you know what I mean yeah um, so so there's three components of it um, but one of the things that I really believe is integrating the approach. So it's not one or the other, it's and, right? It's all of it together, mm -hmm. um, integrated in, uh, I call it, like I said, the nourishment blueprint. Um, and what I do is I really get clear on what that looks like for each person. So mm -hmm. helping people discover which foods work for you, which foods don't work for you. Not everything works for everybody and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no, million variances in the human genome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you add that plus life experiences and it's completely different for everybody. So it's really about figuring out, you know, that, that personalized, um, nutrition solution coupled with, like we were talking about earlier, head and heart work. Um, mm -hmm. I like that you call it head and yeah. heart. So like that to me really means a lot because it is, it's, I eat really intuitively. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually eat probably more than most men that are 200 pounds. And, <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> and like, I, I couldn't, before I used to just look at something and gain weight. And then now it's like, oh man, like I eat constantly, but I eat whole foods and, but right. nothing's off limits for me either. If I feel like going to have a burger and fries, I go and have it. Right. And I, and I do it with no guilt. Mm -hmm. Right, no guilt whatsoever, or shame, and I will eat every last French fry on that plate. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Right. Um, but there is that that head and heart because uh, when when let's talk a little bit about this when you release the weight, mm -hmm. it takes a while for your brain to catch up. Yes. Yes, it does. So I lost, um, I struggled with my weight from the time I was a child. Um, it's another reason why I like to work with moms only because like, I don't want kids to struggle. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's a very traumatic experience in childhood. Um, it really, really messes up your self-worth. And so I struggled with it from the time I was little until the time I was in my early twenties. Uh, and then that's when I got fed up and I was like, I'm not going to do this diet stuff anymore because it doesn't work. 
Um, and I tried to figure out, okay, what does? And I actually ended up getting a degree in this, <laughs> trying to figure it all out for myself. Um, but what was interesting is I lost the weight first. So I lost the weight. I got down to a size zero. It's like the end all be all for a weight loss journey, right? Size zero. And I wasn't happy. I was miserable. Mm. I felt really big and I was in a small body. I felt really small, like not enough. Um, and yet I had reached the ultimate goal. And that's when I realized like there's, there's something else to this, right? Yeah. Um, I was depriving and restricting and limiting to myself. Um, but then I felt like a fraud cause I would go and eat all the forbidden foods. Mm. Um, and so that's when I realized it's this head and heart work stuff. Right. Um, I started going down that rabbit hole and that's when I decided, you know, what would be really amazing if you combined it at the same time. Yeah. Like, at the very beginning. Um, and what I've noticed is when my clients combine really good salad nutrition with the head and heart work, they are able to transform themselves so much faster and mm. they love themselves throughout the process and at the end. So like you were saying at the very end, like all of a sudden your mind takes a while to catch up. It does. It really does. Yeah. Like, uh, I lost my weight, uh, very, very, uh, I released my weight very, very slowly. It was over three years. I yeah. lost, released <laughs> I keep on, like, yeah. about 20 pounds a year. And I'm pretty sure this year I'm going to release about 10, 15, but it's not because I'm about the weight. It's because I'm living a, ha a healthy, active lifestyle. Yeah. And the nutrition, one of my um, affirmations is nothing tastes as good as a healthy body feels. Mm -hmm. So um, when you, because it's a mindset thing, right? It's not, mm -hmm. if you're indulging in all the forbidden foods, let's call it this way, uh, all the time, there's something going on with the relationship of food. Yeah. Like there's something there and it's way deeper than just food. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you can't fix food with food, <laughs> but, it's, <laughs> like, but it doesn't work that way. Um, yeah. You really have to get to some of the root causes of all this. And, and that's what I do with the head and the heart where we really go deep and we, you know, illuminate some of these um, messages. Oh, she's frozen. Hopefully she'll come back right now. Oh, there you are. What happened? Oh, you're, you just froze for a second. Froze. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is an important piece. This is an important yeah, this is kind of like yeah. the end all the no. um, This is when we illuminate some of those messages that we received as kids and we illuminate. I'm just going to reiterate on that is uh while i wait for uh sarah to come back sorry, sorry. Okay, there you are that's okay. i've been fine until i go to <laughs> <laughs> that's okay it's okay stuff happens but um, i want to touch on that because reiterate that factor of how we feel when we're a kid because like even money mindset and business stuff mm -hmm. comes up from uh when we were a kid and what we were told as a kid yeah and um that's really, really big to work through. And, and you're a real blessing for helping people work through that stuff. Thank you. Yeah. So I mean, some of it could be like money mindset, um, scarcity, scarcity, drugs, food issues all the time. Even if you've never experienced any type of lack of, um, you know, your basic needs and food and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, scarcity is what drove my food. Um, my overeating issues, my dysregulated eating. And what's interesting is I never experienced that in my lifetime. Wow. Um, my parents always had plenty. We always had enough. But these messages trickle down. So my great-grandmother went through the Great Depression. She right. um, was a huge influence in my mother's life. Um, and obviously, all of those little messages, you know, trickle down. Uh, if you look at DNA, um, there's this idea well, it's not really an idea, it's scientific, that you're actually created in your mother's womb. I mean, your grandmother's womb. This idea that like her being, including the eggs that would have created you, that would eventually create you, 
was born in your grandmother's womb. So then you think back, okay, well, what was my grandmother experiencing? Because wow. your DNA gets imprinted with those experiences. And so that's why some of these things are so um, deep within you. And it may not even be something you personally experienced yourself. It may be something that, you know, literally is imprinted into your DNA. And that's when we have to rewire the brain. Wow, that's really, really crazy and deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told my, my grandmother, grandmother that. Too. My <laughs> grandmother like, went that's too. That's not how it is. I'm like, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I think that's spot on. And I've actually never heard that before from anybody. So you just hit a light bulb for me because my, who I was named up after my Bubba Mila, she's passed mm -hmm. away now, but um, she uh, went, she lived in Croatia and they went through war. They went through uh, lots of scarcity on all sorts of fronts. And boy, oh boy, I have a really hard time throwing out food. I'm going to tell you, yeah. or not finishing my plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, and then you have on top of that the messages that you probably, like the very um, big messages that you receive as a kid, like don't waste that. We don't waste, you know, there are kids in Africa starving. And you actually <laughs> hear those messages coupled with the fact that it's imprinted on your DNA. And it runs deep and it's literally it's like something is being unraveled and then rewiring it the way that it needs to so that it serves you. And the other thing too is, uh, especially with grandparents, I find that they just want to show us their love. Like my, my Bubba, she always cooked. She was cooking for me. She was always like, um, cooking in the thing and I'll make you your favorite food and you got to eat more and eat more and eat more and like you know and you started and like the European lunches are like the dinner but they're like five courses like every day right yeah <laughs> it's like crazy but that makes so much sense to me but it and you know just the head and heart thing is that it's just because think of all of our celebrations all of our mm -hmm. things are all wrapped up with food yeah, and one of the things that I talk about with my clients is that's okay. And this is a very different take from most nutritionists. Most nutritionists would say, like, no, we have to, you know, disconnect those feelings. And food should never be comfort and sh food should never be celebrated with. And that's not realistic. So my take on it is let's make this work for you in a way that really serves you because food is comforting. Um, yes, yeah. You know, there are dishes that will literally transport you back into your grandmother's kitchen, right? Mm. Uh, my grandmother's Sicilian, so when I go into her house and I smell onions and garlic and meatballs and like, you know, yeah. it, it smells like home. <laughs> it smells like home. It makes you feel like you're home, and that's okay. Um, there's this idea that food should only be fuel. And I don't, I don't believe that. I think that there's so much more to it and, and we should celebrate it. Yeah. Like I love, um, my, uh, gnocchi. I make gnocchi. Oh yeah. So yeah, I make it like once a year, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too much. But I really love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's way too much work but anyways yeah uh, let's get into how has following your intuition in business helped or hindered you and you touched on that a little bit before because you said that's it I'm done with this so you had yeah. that yeah um I had started feeling kind of like that struggle of I'm in this corporate life but I don't want to be here forever this isn't really aligning with who I am and what I want to do um but like I said it wasn't until my grandfather died that I realized that, that um I literally cannot do this like I can't undo this the real me right um so there were <laughs> there are times where i quit i had no idea what i was doing um but i just kept getting this message of like just keep going just keep going just keep going um and there were times where i literally was like i'm done i can't do this anymore like i should just go get a job somewhere right <laughs> um, but i i just couldn't for some reason or another i don't know if it's my intuition necessarily but i just literally could not bring myself to do that and so i just kept pushing forward um and yeah i had to work through a whole lot of different types of head and heart work because when you're starting a business mm. um all kinds of other things start oh so much stuff comes out and you're like i healed so much and <laughs> 
it was not enough for this. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it, it definitely, it took some time and, um, I think it goes back to, it, it actually went back to what I, I always talk to my clients about a lot of grace and compassion. Like I had no idea what I was doing and that was okay. Um, but yeah. then again, like you also have to remember, like we're not wired for struggle. It doesn't have to be, you know, hard. So leaning into the faith and leaning into the ease of it, even though that feels, I think that feels harder than anything. Is it does feel <laughs> harder because I think we're used to struggle, even though it's yeah. not our actual divine. I believe that we have a divine right to be healthy, wealthy, and abundant. And it is our God's given uh, gift and we were born and we're here to do it. And I believe that we're meant to live our passion, but we choose to struggle because it's what we've gone through and it's so scary to take that leap of faith. Yep. Yeah. And, it wasn't uh, until I, I got a message. I had messaged my former CEO for, cause I had received something. I was like, Hey, by the way, this is that. And he said, how's it going? And I said, it's going great. Um, you know, I love being able to juggle client calls and volunteering at my kid's school. And all of that was true, except for when I read it back to myself, I was like, man, I make it sound really full of joy and it's not feeling very joyful right now. And that was like that turning point for me. I'm like, okay, I need to come from a space of joy and this is fun and this is easy and all of that. So yeah, it, it's not always, it's not, as, you know, not always as easy as they, they say it is. But, um, <laughs> no, it's, it's not always easy. This is the thing. It's not always a uh, unicorn rainbows and uh, yeah. glitter, right? Like yeah. it's not always a party all the time. Yeah. And we've got to go through, I really, really, really do believe we have to go through those periods of uh, a little bit, maybe self doubt. I had one of those while doing this, like mm -hmm. I totally, and you go through it all the time, but the more you go through it, the more you have the tools to deal with the situations and to um, move forward, right? So yes. the more that you learn about yourself, yes. the more that you learn about your patterns, the more that you can identify it, the more that you can just really lean in and say, you know what, this is meant to be fun. Because yeah. I was all like stressing and sighing and I was all yeah. like, Ugh, and like, you know, what is going on and whatever, right? And then, yeah. you know what, I said, you know what, this is supposed to be fun. And I said, forget <laughs> it, you know, and then next thing you know, I'm like dancing and having fun and I'm having a riot with the people <laughs> yeah. on the interviews, right? Like, you yeah. know, so it's all about finding that fun and following that passion as well. Exactly. Okay. So uh, why do you feel that nutrition is so important for entrepreneurs? So here's the thing about being an entrepreneur. We just touched on it. Um, <laughs> it's it's kind of this un um, this kind of like uh, I can't think of the word. I'm like thinking terrain, but it, it's like this thing that nobody knows how to navigate. Right. Well. You know what I mean? There's some people that know how to navigate it well, but like it, it's not the typical corporate world where okay. You start out here and you work yourself up and, and eventually you get here and then maybe, you know what I mean? It's not this linear progression. It's, no. it's very much uncharted territory. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Um, and in it, we can really lose ourselves and lose the self care and um, just really focusing on what we need as people to nourish ourselves. Um, I got to this point even in my business where I'm, I'm like sitting here giving everybody ways to nourish themselves and I had to take a step back and I'm like, I'm not nourishing my own self, right? Uh -huh. um, because I've got things that I want to do and deadlines and to do <laughs> and you kind of get into that and you forget, you forget to take care of your own self and realize how important it is. Um, so for me, nutrition and I call like nourishment is more than nutrition. Um, nourishment could be self-care, nourishment could be self-love moments, you know what I mean? Um, but truly nourishing yourself in the like three ways, right? Body, mind, and heart, um, so that you do have the best self to give to others. So you can serve others. Um, and honestly, like if you're eating really well and eating for your nourishment blueprint, you have a lot more energy. <laughs> Yeah, you just do. But you have an ability to show up in a different kind of way. You just do. You really, really do. Like, I eat 
mostly 90, 95% whole foods. Like I just do not eat processed foods at all. Mm -hmm. Nothing that like I, I read a lot of labels and I usually put them back on the shelf. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I just can't justify this. But, um, but I found that my energy and vitality has grown tenfold over mm -hmm. the last uh, three years for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And when um, you eat for your nourishment blueprint, the thing about it is there's so many people struggling with autoimmune disorders and you know, diabetes and um, pain, like when you're carrying extra weight, pain in your knees, uh, pain in your joints, like there's so much. And when you start eating healthier and you start making that shift, you feel so much better. You're not running to the bathroom all the time. You're not like, <laughs> you know, not being able to move in your chair. You know, you're able to get up and walk and do all the fun things that you want to do. So well, yeah. not only that, you deal with a lot of moms and it's like, um, I know a lot of moms and they're not being active with their kids as much as they'd like, or, you know, they get tired out before their kids do, or, you know, and all of those things. And it's really important to uh, be active as a kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're supposed to be the model, right? You're yes. supposed to be the one that shows them this is what we do. This is who we are. Um, and then you're on the couch. <laughs> yeah. And, or, you know, just put on a movie or whatever, or, yeah. or we have too much electronics. I really feel, but anyways, that's a whole nother topic. I do. Yeah, I'm not the parenting expert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Either am I. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Honest engine. But I want to talk just quickly about, yeah. um, injury because you were talking about pain and autoimmune disorders and, and things like that. I, um, I got injured. I hurt my hip, neck and back. Mm -hmm. uh, I fell and I ended up gaining 49 pounds, but I've lost more than that, uh, after, um, and I'm not a size zero and I'm never going to be a size zero and I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. a size eight and I'm, I'm think that I'm perfect just as I am right now. I'm there like awesome. I think I'm yeah. awesome. So <laughs> there you go. And well, I always talk about that. Like there are some people like you're, you're like, even if you just had your skeleton, it's not even going to fit. Like you're just your basic person. We're yeah. all made so differently. We and that's are made so differently and there's no right size or weight or anything according to whatever. And one thing is, is when I did get injured, I had to go and see the uh, hip specialist. This guy, he, my doctor, he was like kind of rude to me. And I was all like, are you kidding? I went into the office and he goes to me, well, the first thing you need to do is lose weight. You're fat. And he was like 140 pounds and five foot nothing and a runner. Like I could tell, right? <laughs> I was like, you jerk. And I left the office. Yeah like just feeling defeated and I was already depressed because I was in pain right. all the time and all of this stuff. And I was eating crappy food. I was eating from the frozen food aisle because it was the only thing I could do. I couldn't stand there and chop vegetables and right. the yeah. skin and I couldn't sit. And it's kind of this big circle of the catch 22 of, Oh, I'm so much in pain. I don't have yeah. the energy to chop all of that stuff. I don't have the energy to pre-plan my things or do that every day. But um, it's really, 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 I gotta say, it's key and very, very important to get on those whole foods mm -hmm. and to start that because you will find that you have the energy afterwards mm -hmm. to do that. And it really helps you and the weight release makes you feel so much better like I don't have pain anymore I used to be awake for years with pain mm -hmm. and yeah. like really crappy sleeping and all of that stuff so how can you how can we incorporate some healthy uh, nourishing foods into our uh, life easily yeah so um, and what you said was really important uh, so when we're in pain and when we have had an injury or something like that, and we can't physically move in the ways that we want to move, the number one thing that you can do is to try 
to muster up all the energy you can. Um, and you can do this with a lot of really good whole food convenience foods in the produce section. It's already done for you. You don't have to sit there and chop and pay a little extra, but that's okay. Um, just to get you through that two or three week period where, you know, you need, your body needs a reset. Um, so you can lose a few pounds because here's the thing, even if you're not moving, if you radically change what you're putting in your body, you're going to see so many benefits and you're going to feel more energized. Um, and that will break the cycle that literally breaks the cycle, that nasty cycle you're talking about where yeah. you're in so much pain and then you go to convenience foods that are not so good for you and then you get in more pain and then you can't move and then it's just never ending. So you have to, you have to break the cycle. Um, and that's the way to do it is really just to focus on nutrition. One thing, um, because when we're in pain, we can't really focus on a lot anyways. No, um, you can't, you can't focus on business. You can't focus on, yeah. uh, being a good partner or a parenting well, or yeah. whatever. Anything. It's so, it's so exhausting. It's yeah. exhausting. It, like, honestly, I was exhausted for years mm -hmm. on end and now I'm, getting my I've got my energy back and I just feel it increasing and increasing it just gets better and better with the more nutritional foods that I have yes and, and then now I really notice if I go the other way yeah and it, it's a big huge like bing 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 yeah, yeah. Like, oh I shouldn't have had that right <laughs> <laughs> because you crave the other things you crave the other parts of it the, once you shift you yeah. start craving the good stuff and you can't actually handle the other stuff. Right. Yeah. So some of my clients will say like, well, what if I, what if I go back to it? And I'm like, I don't, there's, there's a point where you can't go back. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's like that transition period that you can kind of like sink back into that. But once you get over to this little sweet spot you can't ever go back not fully maybe like you said like a treat here or there but you can't ever completely go back to where you came from it just doesn't work that way um okay so you said tips for eating whole foods or tips for like pain just um, maybe a little bit of both <laughs> So they're not you, asking too much for yeah, me. Yeah, no. If you have an injury, usually um, not only are you in pain, but you're also, it's inflamed, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why you're so uncomfortable. So it's really including a lot of anti inflammatory foods and then reducing the ones that create inflammation. The ones that create inflammation is anything processed um, or anything made with fake ingredients. So, like what I call fake ingredients is something from a test tube margarine, shortenings, canola oils, um, all of these things were, were created in the lab. Mm. Um, and really going back to like natural. So if you can, if you know what it is on a food label, it's probably okay. Um, if you cannot pronounce it on a food label, <laughs> it's probably a processed food that is going to create inflammation in your body. Mm -hmm. um, and then the anti-inflammatory foods. This is I know a lot of people are not big into seafood, but fatty fish, high omega-3 fatty acids, low omega-6. Um, so for 10 years, I studied omega-3 fatty acids. That's kind of my thing. Uh, and it's really, really important. We have such a deficit of this in our diets right now. Um, the typical American diet has 25 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Omega-6 is your inflammatory foods. Right. So when you have 25 times what you're supposed to have, that's what makes such a big difference is when we reduce those down and then increase those omega-3s up, you will see huge differences. So that's like all of your, um, you know, fatty fish, grass-fed meats, loads of vegetables, um, fruits, all of this is going to start reducing your, um, or increasing your omega-3. And then, but it's, you have to do it in tandem, reducing all of those, you know, not so healthy fats, and um, processed foods and, and well, the thing that really, really, really shifted me was giving up dairy. And I didn't know, but I was lactose intolerant. I didn't yeah. find out until I was forty-one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dairy can be very inflammatory, especially um, women who um, it usually happens uh, around 
late 20s, early 30s, if you start getting acne along your jawline, it's mainly due to dairy. Like if I pull that out of somebody's diet, they're instantly feeling better with their skin. Um, yeah, huge difference. Huge difference. And uh, the, that's the, I pulled that out of my diet and you know what? I felt better immediately. I still have acne stuff even though I'm in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. And I do have dairy every once in a while, but it's like only when I'm really, 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 really craving it. It's usually yeah. after a super, super long run where I need calories because that's what I learned intuitively is mm -hmm. I crave cheese when I need the calories. A high fat food. Yeah. Yeah. So I find that I just, I try to incorporate other things like stuff with coconut oil instead. Yeah. And I'm a big uh, believer in apple cider vinegar. Do you, do you recommend that for people? Um, yeah, I mean, if I think it's okay. I'm not one of those people that I, I think that you should have it. Like a lot of um, nutritionists say, pour that lemon or, or lemon and water before, like mm -hmm. right when you first wake up. You could definitely do that. Um, I, I take more of a, I guess, real no I don't know how to explain it um I feel like sometimes we get hooked on these little things do you know what I mean mm -hmm. if it makes you feel great do it but I don't I don't like it when people get hooked on these little things where they have to do something because right. like it's out there and that's one of those things that sometimes it makes really good sometimes they people don't feel very good they get really like um sick belly aches and stuff like that uh it can cause acid reflux I mean just a lot of little things that like well, it seems to work pretty good for me. So, um, and that's it. So here's the thing. Like my thing is your nourishment blueprint. You do what works for you. Um, but I'm not one of those people that say, yeah, you should definitely do that. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I don't think I'm describing this very well. No, no, I get it. I totally, I totally, totally get it because we have to, whether you're a vegan or a meat eater or um, a dairy lover or not, we have to find a, a rhythm and a pattern yeah. that works for us no matter what right and for me yeah. I find that I go on and off the apple cider vinegar <laughs> yeah. and I go on it and I go off it but I do feel good when I do it and I was just wondering if that's something how you felt about it because I'm curious about what other people think I am always curious yeah. about everything so I, guess, um, I don't I don't know if it, it has all of the health benefits that a lot of bloggers um have Same. put out there i haven't seen any scientific so i'm a sciencey person i haven't yeah. seen any scientific literature backing it up um and it's the same thing with certain certain new stuff like stevia i haven't seen the scientific literature so i, I don't you, even i don't have sugar in my diet and i just yeah. don't even want to do i tasted it once it tastes chemically it 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 does but it's it's all natural but my theory is okay it is all natural but it came from a green leaf and it's a white powder so there was processing and refining that went into that right and we don't have the evidence to suggest anything right now we just don't have the scientific literature so i err on the side of caution um and i want to make sure that like it's not um you know when artificial sweeteners came out it was the big thing it was so healthy for you and now we've realized it's very very bad for you same with margarine. It was told to us that it was really healthy for you mm -hmm. to come to find out it was really bad for you. So that's why I, I err on the side of caution if I don't know the scientific literature backing it up. That's all. Right. I think that sounds better. Than <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's all good. It's yeah. all good. I follow you. And like you said, it's your own personal nourishment uh, blueprint. And that's the thing. Um, and yeah, that's the main thing. I'm working at it in tandem of, I just want to reduce the uh, amounts of inflammatory and then increase the ones that are anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. and then work on your head and your heart at the same time. And man, I, I imagine that your clients get massive results uh, right away. Yeah, I think that my clients get really good results, but I think a lot of it is because it's tailored nutrition um so for example um what one if you have a food sensitivity it's going to create inflammation in your gut if it creates mm -hmm. inflammation in your gut you're going to have a surge of bad bacteria and you're going to have a reduction of good bacteria it's just kind of how it happens right 
Um, so what works for one person and could be really anti-inflammatory could be incredibly inflammatory in somebody else. So right. yeah, it's knowing what good foods to eat, but it's also knowing what foods are good for your your body and your gut and all of that good stuff. So um, like, let's say if you have a gluten sensitivity or an intolerance or an actually celiac disease, yeah. um, it's actually creating inflammation. And inflammation, I think it's hard for people to realize, but it's like if you have a cut on your hand, it's like red and swollen and that's what your insides look like because of it. Um, and then that's why you have such you know pain and discomfort. So yeah, it's about reducing those inflammatory foods. Um, and what are the most, do what? what are the most inflammatory foods that you think that people should maybe try to hold back on? You said processed foods, but like. Yeah. So um, anything that has processed, you know, anything that has um, fake ingredients, but mo mainly unhealthy fats, unhealthy fats like margarine, shortening, um, all of your canola oil, vegetable oils, all of those oils. And then anything that's deep fried in that, anything that, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not just those oils, but it's, yeah. you know, anything that's cooked with it. Um, it's in a tremendous amount of processed foods. It's, right. it's really cheap. And so that's what, what you recommend instead of uh, canola oil. Um, personally in my house, we do olive oil. I do coconut oil. Sometimes we usually use coconut oil for our bodies more than we yeah, do. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's kind of the running joke, but like if you have any ailment, you just slather that in coconut, yeah, oil. coconut oil, can yeah. organic coconut oil will work yeah. for anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and butter, um, you know, and good butter. grass fed butter yeah. has so many nutrients in it. Um, also all of your just natural fats found in grass-fed meats and wild game and things like that, that's a great way to get healthy fats. Um, I know lard got a really bad rap a long time ago, um, <laughs> but it's not as bad as it once was, right? Now we know that it's not necessarily saturated fat that's causing a lot of inflammation um, and a lot of health concerns, which is sugar. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these are really so eliminate about sugar. That down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eliminate sugar, processed foods, and uh, increase the fruits, veggies, and all of that. So. so, yeah, if you were to reduce unhealthy fats and sugar, um, you would see a huge difference just in that one thing alone. Um, and I don't know of one person um, that hasn't benefited from that that I've worked with. Those two there things. is not there is not a way <laughs> in the world yeah. that no one would have a benefit from eliminating or at yeah. least reducing at very minimum reducing yeah this stuff. okay well that was uh i want to thank you because this is like so 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 important for uh entrepreneurs and to just like i can talk nutrition all day so <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for joining me and it's yeah. just been a wealth of information information here with you today, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how do our viewers find you? Yeah. So I have a website. It's called nourishyourlife.org. Um, and then I also have a Facebook group called the Nourished Mama. And both groups are welcome to all. Um, and yeah, that's where you find me. I'm also on Instagram and nourishyourlife.org underscore. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I'll be sharing the links anyway, so we'll yeah, be sure to follow and we'll uh, hit you up on Facebook and the Nourish Mama group and everything. Oh, it's just been such a pleasure and I want to thank you so much and uh, we'll see you on uh, soon and thank you and I'll see you on the thank next Thank you video. so much.